In this lesson, I'm going to describe some of the key structures that are seen in the palm, particularly the superficial structures of the palm. So let's start by looking at a palmer view of the right hand, and one can see the palm as well as the various digits. There are two elements of the hand in the more proximal part, known as the thenar and hypothenar eminences, as seen here, as well as seen here. The thenar eminence is the area at the base of the thumb, whereas the hypothenar eminence is the area at the base of the little finger. And these are quite prominent because of certain muscles that are in, this, in these locations. The hand can be divided into two parts uh, through a line uh, going down the middle uh, of the ring finger, as seen here. That divides it into a 1.5 or 1.5 digits on the ulnar side, and then the remainder of the 3.5 digits on the more radial side. The ulnar nerve uh, supplies these 1.5 digits, that is the little finger, as well as one half of the ring finger as seen here. So this is the ulnar nerve, and it's coming down the ulnar side of the wrist, crosses into the hand, and then it divides into what are known as digital branches as seen in the diagram. There are two digital branches in each digit, one that runs down the medial side of the digit and one that runs down the lateral side of the digit. The ulnar nerve supplies both sides of the little finger and it supplies the medial or ulnar side of the ring finger. The other nerve which is in this location is the median nerve and it runs down through the carpal tunnel and it divides into multiple digital nerve branches as shown here in the diagram. And therefore the radial or lateral side of the ring finger along with both sides of the middle finger, the index finger, and the thumb are supplied by the median nerve. This is the classic distribution of innervation of these two nerves into the palm. There are some anatomical variations where a little larger area may be supplied by the median nerve or the same may be true with a little larger area being supplied by the ulnar nerve. There's a final small part that is seen at the base of the thumb that is innervated by the radial nerve, as seen here. Much larger portions of the dorsum of the hand is supplied by the radial nerve, but there's often a small part that will creep on to the palmar side and is often seen in the base of the thumb area, as shown in the diagram. Let's now review the blood supply of the hand, and in order to do that, we have a simple line drawing that depicts the skeleton along with the outer covering the skin of the palm and the digits. And the ulnar artery is one such artery that supplies the hand coming down the ulnar side of the wrist as shown here. And it is joined by the radial artery on the other side as shown here. Both of these, the ulnar and the radial arteries, divide into a superficial and a deep branch. And the superficial branches uh, unite to form the superficial palmar arch, which is seen here. Note that the major contributor to the superficial palmar arch is from the ulnar artery. Sometimes this arch uh, may be incomplete, uh, and there is a fair amount of anatomical variation in terms of the extent and the contribution between the two arteries. Likewise, the deep branches, both from the ulnar and the radial arteries, also unite to form the deep palmar arch, as seen here. And in this uh, arch, it is primarily the radial artery which participates in its formation. Again, there is a fair amount of anatomical variation in how these arches are formed and whether they are complete or incomplete. These, uh, both of these arches are excellent examples of what we call as anastomosis, where arteries come together and have a joint blood supply and they actually mix, meet up with each other. The superficial arch and the palmar arch, both of them supply the rest of the hand by dividing into multiple smaller branches. 
The superficial palmar arch gives off several branches, typically somewhere between three to five, and these run down the hand and then divide into what are known as digital arteries and run with the digital nerves on either side of the digits. So there's one for the ulnar side of the digit and one for the medial side. Similarly, the deep palmar arch also gives rise to a number of smaller branches, but primarily the branches running to the thumb come from the deep arch. And in this way, there is a very rich supply of blood, and this can all often be altered based on environmental circumstances, whether there's exposure to cold or, or, or hot weather or other such environmental conditions. Let's now look at a superficial dissection uh, of the palm of the hand, and we have removed the skin and we have removed some of the superficial connective tissue to clean out this area and show some of the deeper structures quite clearly. The first structure that is seen here is this flat triangular structure known as the palmar eponeurosis. This is a connective tissue structure that sits in the middle of the palm and provides for attachment of some of the other structures. It also is a location where the skin is, uh, finds firm attachment to some of the deeper structures. We see a group of muscles at the base of the thumb, which forms the thenar eminence, which is seen right here in this area, and these are known as the thenar group of muscles. Likewise, you have the hypothenar eminence at the base of the little finger, and these muscles are known as the hypothenar group of muscles. Note some of the key neurovascular structures that are crossing from the forearm across the wrist and entering into the hand. The first one of these is the artery on the ulnar side, known as the ulnar artery, which is seen here. It is accompanied by a nerve, the ulnar nerve, which lies right adjacent to it over here. Both of these cross from the forearm across the wrist into the hand outside the carpal tunnel and are seen very clearly in this dissection. The other nerve that we can see more towards the center of the wrist is the median nerve, which is seen here. And note that it is entering into the carpal tunnel and goes out of view at the point of the carpal tunnel uh, location. The final structure in this area is the radial artery, which is seen here. And this is the other artery that has a supply into the wrist and hand area.